That Metal Interview. Welcome to this episode of That Metal Interview podcast with myself, James. Uh, we welcome everybody. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel, That Metal Interview podcast. Uh, follow us on social media, of course, Facebook, Twitter, and all that. And thank you for following us on iHeartRadio, um, Spotify, Google Podcast, and all that. Thank you for downloading our podcast. And of course, thank you for listening to jrocksmetalzone.com, 24-7 rock metal for all you headbangers, all you metal fans out there. So, And today we have uh, the pleasure of speaking with the Canadian vocalist, Priya Panda. Uh, we are talking about Diamonds, a band that has been touring America and Canada since about the late 2000s. Uh, these guys have had the opportunity to support and tour with a bunch of name bands such as Guns N' Roses, Slash, The Darkness, Megadeth, Steel Panther, Sebastian Bach, and so forth and so on and so on. These guys have been out there paying their dues. Great, great rock and roll music, rock metal music for you guys and girls. Check it out. Diamonds but it's spelled a bit different. It's D I E M O N D S diamonds D I E. So look it up, Spotify, this and that YouTube, check out their videos. Um, today we speak with their vocalist Priya Panda, and she has her own single, uh, independent stuff. As we talk, she'll, she'll talk to you about it. Take me back. A uh, little change there in um, genre, a very, very cool, very cool genre, an 80s feel to it. I myself, personally, I'm a, a big, a huge 80s fanatic. And this is what you get when you listen to Take Me Back from Priya Panda. And here it is. We're going to show you the song first. Uh, Priya Panda, Take Me Back. Don't go anywhere. That Metal Interview Podcast. Can't tell that I'm not playing. It 
Panda Diamonds and you get that awesome 80s feel 80s feel jam from Take Me Back something I personally really enjoy I love I love 80s I'm a huge 80s fanatic and this is what you get in my opinion when you listen to Take Me Back Priya Panda and uh, she speaks also she talks to us about uh, doing that cruise, a kiss cruise, of course. And she speaks of uh, touring, endless touring, endless stories um, and support and, uh, of different bands. And also she talks about her favorite band, or at least one of her favorite bands, Vane, if you guys remember that. So I'll stop talking and uh, I'll let you guys check out our interview with uh, Priya Panda of Diamonds. Here it is. Priya, talk to us about the new jam, the new song you have presented to your public, to your fan base. The song is called Take Me Back. A little uh, change in style, but very good change, very good style, of course, in my opinion, and any music fanatic's opinion. Uh, this is a very uh, 80s uh, felt song in my opinion so talk to us about that uh, about that song uh, musicians involved um, uh, who wrote the song and this and that yeah so I guess this is a, um, a metal podcast yeah yes it's a metal podcast so, it's a metal podcast so I guess you heard the new single and yes. probably realized that it's a big change from what I um, have done in the past with different bands that I've been in yes. um, whether it's Diamonds She Demons or other bands where we're primarily rock or punk or metal mm. um, I kind of took a little bit of a change in direction with this um, with this track because I've always wanted to explore something um, different it's, it's still in the 80s realm which is my favorite you know it's my genre yeah. um, it's my era and, and every every type of music from that genre appeals to me oh, yeah. so uh, it's a great era a great time for music awesome the best yeah um, I mean you know I missed out on it all so I've been doing my very best <laughs> to relive it ever since but um, yeah the new the new track is a, is a change in direction in terms of all of that um, it kind of follows my interest in the other side of pop music that was pretty popular in the 80s which was you know synth based music yeah. primarily British New Wave I love bands like Depeche Mode New Order Pet Shop Boys and Human League and I think that my, my newest music is inspired and informed by that kind of music um, I recorded it with actually the this um, really talented producer from Toronto. His name's Dejan Martineau, and um, surprisingly, I've actually worked with or co-written um, on three Diamonds records with Dejan. So Dejan's really super versatile, and he was instrumental um, in me being able to change my direction and kind of giving me the confidence to do so by being able to work with somebody that I'm super comfortable and familiar with. Um, and, and it was different because I don't actually have a, a band, um, when it comes to this project. So we had some, um, friends come in. Um, we had a Canadian guitar player called Steve Costello come in yeah. and he did a lot of the guitars. Um, it was recorded in Los Angeles. 
in North Hollywood at Goddess Sound and um, um, but yeah a lot of my friends and my contacts are Canadian and continue to be so we had them come in and um, yeah the, the most I guess um, metal metal credit on the on the track is um, uh, my friend Brent Woods who plays in who plays in Sebastian Bach's band yeah. and oh wow and yeah so he played some of the cool like Martin Gore kind of Depeche Mode guitars over the top of it so yeah great work yeah. great work uh, I heard the song it's, it's nice thank you that was my next question um, the change in the uh, uh, I don't want to say genre since you know Diamonds is more rockish. To me, I love '80s. I love all that stuff. So great job, great song. Thank you. Yeah. So is this the end of Diamonds, or is just a, a solo record? It's funny that you should ask that because you know Diamonds hadn't played a gig uh -huh. in about a year, okay. and we just played um, a couple weeks ago on the Monsters of Rock Cruise, which for for my band for diamonds has always been like this dream gig that we've always wanted we've wanted it since day one we've, we've applied we've applied every year since the, the cruise existed and they finally you know caught wind of us um, really? a few years ago and we were so excited nice, nice. Um, so yeah that 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 really it kind of though we haven't we didn't tour the last record we put out which came out in 2018 but um you didn't tour it okay we did not tour it okay. no we didn't the only shows we played basically since that record came out has been the two monsters of rock cruise gigs that we had mm -hmm. um but playing together i mean they're my best friends and when we get together it's just like old times and you know we got to that that point where we were like oh my gosh we should play more shows and right. you know it's just so much fun and like you know it's great hanging out but the reality is um when diamonds was touring all the time it was a lot of work for us and right. um it was generally done on an independent level which a lot of our peers had you know booking agents and lots of like you know roadies and just things like that that we never ever really got to that point even though we toured for 10 years we did it in a van and we drove ourselves to every city we pretty much booked every tour every festival and opening slot and cool opportunity that we got generally yeah. was from our own hard work and nice. um, efforts and and we're really proud of that but i don't think that that's something that we're chasing after now because um it's just not <clears throat> it's just not a priority for any of us at the moment um if we get a cool gig we're definitely going to be open to taking it um you know we'll play at parties and festivals and you know like a tour a small tour yeah. um doing an opening stop slot for a band we've always liked those are all things that we'd consider for sure but to say that we're still as active as we used to be like playing you know 80 to 100 shows a year that's probably never gonna happen again is there a reason behind it it's been a while now so i've had a lot more time to process it but um and i'm not as emotionally attached to the outcome of my answers anymore so i'm happy to like talk about it but um I guess, I don't know we were tired of it exactly. Um, we were just, it was really hard to see growth, you know? Like every year we yeah. would go back to the same city and there would be more people there, but it was hard because we yeah. weren't really doing a lot of, um, you know, we did a lot of headline tours, which are small clubs, and then there's people who'd come from like festivals that we'd played and whatnot. But we rarely, in like especially in the United States, we never really did a proper support slot tour. So all the fans who came to know of us or still are fans of ours, you know, we had to connect to them each and every one individually. And that was, you know, it's really cool. Like I think as far as bands go, we know a ton of our fans personally and it, and it means the world to us, you know. Yeah. But, um, that's the way to go, I think, you know, <laughs> going back to the, the the roots, I guess, you know, booking your own deals, and I think that's the way to go, that's cool. I mean, yeah, it's, it's the way to um, definitely get stuff going, but eventually to, like, be able to connect with better, od bigger audiences or broader audiences or more people or different, you know, um, 
music listeners, you kind of need opportunities. And so, yeah, we, we, we did what we could. We definitely did what we could. How did Diamonds start? For the people that don't know... Um, well, Diamonds was like... <laughs> uh, it's like it's been so long, you know, we were, we, we started, I started the band in 2000 and basically in 2005 yeah. um, with my, my, you know, my really good girlfriends mm -hmm. and um, it was hard playing with people I knew so well because they had a lot of excuses as to why they, they shouldn't show up and why they couldn't show up and, you know, I realized maybe I shouldn't um, play with my friends. Like, you know, play with my friends and make that uncomfortable. It's almost like, you know, dating your really good friends and, and, and it can cause issues. So I yeah. basically found people that just wanted to play music and do what I wanted to do. And it was it was pretty hard because in that time, like, I didn't know very many people who liked Rat. And I didn't know anybody who liked, you know, all the deep bands I like, like Fane and like, I don't know, Tough or and Ten and like enough's enough and just there was it was like it wasn't yeah, the it wasn't really that common to find people my age who like that stuff so i actually met cc on a tour bus in new york city i i like basically um i was on the bus with with my ex-boyfriend because he his cousin was playing and um cc was the bass tech on that tour and um I met him and I was just, we, we got to talking and I didn't realize he was from Toronto because Toronto, though it's a huge city, we kind of all know each other there, especially if we all have similar interests. And um, and we were shocked that we didn't know each other because in the first five minutes we were talking about bands like Rat and Motley Crue and like, you know, this is 2004 or five, like, Mo like Motley hadn't even reunited at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So we, you know, and we were just kids. So it was super strange to have met somebody that was into that kind of music. And we, I still went home and I continued trying to do the band and it was pretty difficult. But um, I was actually in New York interning for MTV, which is when I met Cece. When I got home, I tried to do the band with the lineup I had prior, but you know, I just thought Cece would be a great addition. And as soon as he joined the band, that's when everything changed, you know, like that's when we started getting together and writing all the time. Like we got the first, um, we had our first four song demo, like all written, you know, within a month's time of hanging out. Nice. And, and we just felt like, you know, we were really making progress. And prior to that, we were just kind of playing basement keg parties and doing some covers and we had some originals but we weren't actively moving forward with it and i think you know that was diamonds me and cc what was your favorite part of touring when you guys were on tour um you know when i was in, on tour some of the things that i look back on fondly now um at the time i found you know like a little bit frustrating like you know <laughs> being one of the, the the band's primary drivers or you you know yeah big time really okay Me, yeah or that's cool you know, that's cool yeah it's just, it's just it was like a matter of circumstance you know a lot of people in Toronto actually never learned how to drive so we had have had various different people in the band who never had their license so oh wow yeah um Oh, wow. So I feel pretty lucky that I actually know how to drive being from Toronto um, because of touring. Yeah. Um, a lot of my I don't think we'll ever learn how to drive, you know, it's not a priority for them. But um, so, yeah, I spent just things like that, like spending time on the road was like, uh, you know, just driving for hours and hours. I don't really get a chance to do that anymore. And now I realize it was such a part of my fabric that I do miss it. And, yeah. you know, I'll seek out opportunities to take long drives now um but the main thing that i miss of course is being in the van with my best my best friends yeah. um yeah, I'm sure. on the planet who know me better than anyone and i know them better right. than anyone like we don't even have to speak and we already know you know like yeah. we'll just like be standing in silence and then just burst out laughing and then <laughs> we don't even have to say what we're talking about we already know you know and i miss i miss that that's yeah. That is a big difference between doing your own thing and having, you know, four brothers. Right. Any good stories or fun stories you can share with your fans? Uh, for, you know, stories from the road? 
I don't even know where to begin with that too. Uh, um, there's too many. <laughs> yeah, like let me like there's a story that I like to tell that you know to me is so important because I love this band called Vane from the Bay Area. They're like a team. I know them, but they're yeah the, the glam the the eighties. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, ni- like more like nineties, but yeah. yeah um, they were like a late era, okay. you know, hard rock band from the Bay Area, and they're like my favorite. They're like the holy grail to me of the whole genre. They did they had the best songwriting, they had like the greatest frontman, they had the best banter, they sounded amazing live, like they had the best characters, like they're, they're my band, you know, like and nobody knows, not that many people know who they are but um we were playing in san francisco for the first time and i was just like holy shit we're like we're near where veins from like this is crazy you know like it was our first california tour yeah and um and so when we were sound checking we sound checked beat the bullet and i was just like man that felt fun you know like holy shit how fun and later while we're playing in the middle of the night like the the like crowd and Trina and I see Davey Bain walk in like in the middle of our set and I'm just like how do you know how did he find out that we're playing here tonight what is he (laughs) doing here this is insane like my mind is blowing right now oh wow and it turned out that the sound guy had called been like hey there's like these this young band here from Canada and they just sound checked with beat the bullet like you've got to come down and check this out and he he came you know like (laughs) That kind of stuff will never stop blowing my mind. Like, oh wow! Pictures I had on my wall show up to our shows, and you know, it's it's so it's it never gets old. I don't know how people get ever get jaded by music or by um by being a fan or of being you know of seeing live bands. Like for me, that'll never stop. Right. I mean, I'll always be in, in awe of rock and roll. Oh yeah, me too. I'm a I'm a big fan of. Uh... Uh, metal, rock, all kinds of music, you know, 80s, 90s, whatever. Yeah. Nice, man. We're all fans, so. Um, Keep the spirit alive. Of course, of course. Uh, is there anything you would change uh, in your whole career so far if you had a chance to to change something? Something I, you regret, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't regret it necessarily and I think it's never too late and that's what I'm doing now but I believe that I would have had a lot of fun and maybe who knows if diamonds had diversified a lot earlier like if we had put you know if I had made my solo record while the band is still functional or um, people had side projects or they were in other bands that they enjoyed like maybe you know when you know, something you, you're putting all your 110% of your effort in and it's not, you know, you're not getting that back um, yeah. just because that's the nature of being in a band. You get, I don't know, like like the wrong things have upset you, you know, like you're not upset with the band, you're not upset with the people in the band, you're not upset with the music, you're not upset with the shows. Um it's more like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like the opportunities and the, the fact that you're putting in all your time and all yeah. your money and all of your years, you know, and you're just not seeing it back. I think if we had been able to do other things while we were in that band, we, we might have continued to balance everything. Right. More so, but but who knows? I'm just, that's like completely hypothetical. I have no idea. Yeah. I just feel like one of the, my my entire i guess like people often ask me like oh what's your advice for somebody starting a band and my advice is always like be in your band do your band do your thing hell yeah go on tour for sure Mm -hmm. but i also think you could do other bands or try playing in other people's music or you know you know keep your chops up with, with with a cover band or like do anything because it's it's tough like you can give 100 500 percent to your band and you know yeah not that there's anything wrong with that you have to be committed to like see progress and results but like it, it doesn't hurt to be versatile right well well you got a good voice and uh you got some good music so don't don't give up <laughs> 
Keep going. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes keep you just gotta you gotta keep going. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Keep keep going. You know. People like you know you and other people are listening. I'll keep putting it out there, and even if there aren't people listening, I'll definitely keep making it. <laughs> right. So that's that's just for me, and that's something that's really changed my relationship with um, making songs. Has changed. Um, I don't have any expectation anymore. Right. With you know what I'm writing or what I'm doing, I'm just making it because like I feel driven to, and I have to, and that's something that I haven't felt, had not felt in a long time. So it feels good. So, uh, what are your plans? Or what are the plans for Priya in the future? Uh, uh, as far as uh, your 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 new style of music now, or what what's your future like? Um, that's a good question. I, I mean, I wish I had a crystal ball. Right. Um, but for me, and what I want to do is like I'm, I'm I've 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 recorded like eight or nine songs. Um. I guess I'll put some of them out and I made a couple videos and I'm going to put those out and nice. I just you know, hope a, a lot of people hear them and relate to the music because the songs are super personal to me. Um, everything I speak about in the songs like happened to me and, it, and, I, and I experienced and they were, you know, I'm coming out the other side of some of the, um, the stories that I'm telling that were to me so they're like life altering. Um, the the songs happen to be generally about a, a, a relationship that I've been in since I relocated to Los Angeles, and uh -huh. it was the most. I don't know. It really changed my life, and I had to write about it. I was like unable to move forward without. Yeah, like writing about it because I find I find things hard to talk about. So yeah, you got to. I'm sure a lot of people say that who move to music stuff. Um, yeah, not it, much of matters, but yeah, it's gonna help you move uh, move forward and move on, right? Yeah, that's good. It's therapy, right? It's therapy. It has been therapy. It has been extremely therapeutic, and playing live with my band again has reminded me that. Like that's what I do, and that's what I've always done, and and it and 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 the desire hasn't gone away. So. So you guys did that cruise, uh, and uh, you said you hadn't played in a while. How did that uh, come about? Did you guys re uh, rehearse, or did you guys just you know picked up where you left we, off, or? No, we definitely rehearsed. <laughs> You're right. Uh, it's crazy though because. I, I mean, I live in L.A. now, so I had to fly home to Toronto. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's the middle of winter, so it's like in yeah. the negatives. It's colder, yeah. snow everywhere. It's cold up there, yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, you know, I spent my entire life up there. Um, There's a big change in weather from L.A. to Toronto to L.A. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say. It was like an immediate reminder of you know, who I am and where I come from. It was, it was crazy. Um, because the weather here doesn't change much and it's lovely. It's like paradise, but you know, the seasons made me who I am and going home, rehearsing, we rehearsed just one, we had one session, one rehearsal. It was like, you know, we booked a, a rehearsal room in the place that we used to jam and we're just there for, you know, eight hours. We smoked weed and ordered pizza, just like old time. Awesome. Like, laughed till we couldn't breathe and just, <laughs> you know. Good times. Drink Gatorade. Yeah, it was fun. And then and then the next day, we flew, flew to Florida. So it was really quick. It was, you know, we just did it. And, and actually, we flew to Florida, and we were the first band on the boat. Okay. So really? We didn't have any time to, you know, mess around or... Yeah, waste just, any more time we just had to basically get on the boat put on our stage clothes bring our instruments to the stage and do stand soundtrack so. oh wow that's cool that's cool yeah i've done a couple of cruises that um just regular stuff you know that's they're very uh therapeutic also yeah yeah they're, they're quite relaxing and the feeling yeah. of the water under underneath you is is is, is a relaxing feeling if, if, as long as you don't get seasick i guess but um yeah so, it, it was good it was great it was awesome so the, whole, the whole trip was great diamonds is a uh, um 
you can say it's active you guys just you guys doing just uh special gigs or gigs you guys feel are uh, yeah i mean yeah. We're, we're, we're just doing gigs we want to do at this point so awesome so do you plan to release a full album or just singles and videos as you said from your stuff um i think i have enough material for an album so uh -huh. when the time comes i can consider that for sure um i'm just trying to see yeah i have actually to be to be 100% honest with you i have no fucking idea what i'm doing so um, <laughs> that's cool you're being honest that's cool yeah i'm just i don't barely even know how to use the internet or spotify or like uploading things and like it's not for me diamonds was a vinyl and a cassette band and we right. if you wanted to listen to us you probably could see us live right. and um so I, i'm learning i'm learning how to um, yeah. navigate things differently and just everything's different with this project it's just me the yeah. music's about my story and whatever happens with the music is on me as well i suppose i'm starting with a couple tracks and you know there's been really good feedback um even from a lot of people who generally you know say they don't really listen to music outside of rock and metal um they've said that you know it's interesting to them and that i'm proud of because it gets people maybe listening to something that they wouldn't normally right. and yeah um i've just been trying to send it to some people i know and some friends and, you know kind of spreading the word that i'm doing what i'm doing now and it's cool i think um eventually i'd like to play live and i'll probably start with with la because you know it's where i'm at yeah. and um local and the music's so inspired by this place um it's like it's so you know it's sunny every day but like yeah. the undercurrent of all this shit that's going on here is is crazy you know like hollywood is crazy and right. um, the music industry is crazy and the traffic's crazy and the pollution's crazy and has to like I'm, i'm you know i'm from toronto so i'm not used to watching the city the surrounding of the city on fire for like three or four months out of the year and, and that's common here you know right just everything's burning and you know that's everything's just different and it's crazy and it really inspired my music like i'm born and raised in toronto so the change was good for me yeah culture shock <laughs> yeah, yeah it actually was you know i've been here so many times but yeah on tour Uh, any message you want to uh, send your fans, people listening to this podcast? Yeah, I want to say um, to anyone who's been listening to any of my bands over the years or any of my projects, I appreciate you guys like so much. I've never really, you know, there's no real way to thank everybody who's come to our shows or just driven like hours and hours and traveled for days like there's people when we toured the uk just went on the whole tour and you know like we were killing ourselves getting from show to show we're like how the fuck are you here before us you know like <laughs> it was crazy like right? and, and there's no way to repay those people yeah. um for what they've um true. done for our band so true fans huh those are true fans yeah everyone's a true fan who's ever showed up honestly it's not easy to you know leave the house when you can just see everything online yeah um go on your phone skip everything and just spend the entire night scrolling instagram right. for watching netflix so every person that's ever come out to see us like they to me they are a super fan so awesome well we thank you for making time thank you priya thank you for uh taking some time to talk to us and uh Of course, yeah. Anytime. We thank Priya for making time to speak uh, to our podcast, That Metal Interview Podcast with James, which is myself. Uh, personally, thank you. And from everybody here at jrocksmetalzone.com, our official rock metal website and rock metal radio, 24-7 radio, jrocksmetalzone.com. Thank you for your support. And don't forget to stream Priya Panda don't forget to stream diamonds straight out of toronto canada stream their stuff support their stuff if you see them on the road 
go out and support Diamond's live, great rock and roll, live metal music, okay? So, on behalf of me, James, and all our staff here at That Metal Interview Podcast, thank you for joining us, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and don't forget to keep it metal. (laughs) 